Hello everyone. Welcome to Digital Communication Tutorials. In this video, I am going to discuss on the topic Duo Binary Signaling Scheme. You should know Duo Binary Signaling Scheme is a derivative of Correlative Coding Technique. Let me first give a brief introduction to Correlative Coding. Till now, that is until our previous video, we have discussed intersymbol interference as an undesirable phenomena that produces a degradation in the overall system performance. However, by adding intersymbol interference to the transmitted signal in a controlled manner, it's very important to note, in a controlled manner, it is possible to achieve a bit rate of 2 B0 bits per second in a channel that has a bandwidth of only B0 Hz. Such schemes are called as correlative coding schemes also as partial response signaling schemes. The design of these schemes is based on the idea that since the intersymbol interference introduced into the transmitted signal is already known, its effect can be compensated at the receiver. Therefore, the correlative coding may be regarded as a practical means of achieving the theoretical maximum signaling rate of 2 B0 bits per second in a channel of bandwidth B0 Hz. Let us now start the discussion on duo binary signaling. The word duo implies doubling the transmission capacity of a binary system. Please remember we are considering a binary system here. Let us consider a binary input sequence BK consisting of uncorrelated binary digits each having a duration of 1 TB seconds. Let the symbol 1 be represented by a pulse of amplitude plus 1 volt and symbol 0 by a pulse of amplitude minus 1 volt. So you should remember we are actually representing symbols 1 and 0 using polar format. Now let the input binary sequence BK be applied to a duo binary encoder which is shown in the diagram here. The input binary sequence BK is first passed through a simple filter this part which involves a 1 bit delay limit. For every unit impulse that is applied to this filter, we get two impulses which are spaced 1 TB seconds apart at the filter output. This is the output of the simple filter. So we can express the digit CK at the output of the simple filter as the sum of the present binary digit BK and its previous value P of K minus 1. Now since there is a 1 bit delay element here, and if this is the kth bit, then the output of the delay element will be bk minus 1. So I can now represent the output ck as the sum of the current binary digit bk and b of k minus 1, which is the 1 bit delay element output in the equation form as ck equals bk plus b of k minus 1. Now, looking closely into this equation, we note that we have in fact introduced correlation between the input samples BK and B of K minus 1. This correlation introduced between the adjacent sample levels can be understood as introducing intersymbol interference into the transmitted signal, which is CK, in an artificial manner. However, you should note the correlation is introduced only between the adjacent samples, and therefore we can say that. The intersymbol interference is under the designer's control, which in fact forms the overall idea behind the correlative coding. Therefore, we can now say that the duo binary signaling scheme converts the uncorrelated input sequence PK into a sequence CK of correlated digits. That is why the name correlative coding technique. Let us now move on to the mathematical aspect of this session. Let us start by finding the transfer function of the duo binary filter. Let me come back to the diagram and show this block which is made up of discontinuous lines is the duo binary conversion filter. This one is the simple filter and the ideal channel cascaded with the simple filter forms the duo binary conversion filter. The duo binary conversion filter has a transfer function of h of f. Let us now find an expression for h of f. So we note that the transfer function of the 1 bit delay element is given by exponential of minus j2 pi f capital TB. I'll come back to the diagram. Now I'm writing the transfer function of the 1 bit delay element. 
on the other hand the transfer function of the no delay element which is this straight line is actually one therefore the transfer function of the simple filter which consists of the no delay line and the one bit delay line is equal to one plus the transfer function of the delay element so i have written it here as one plus exponential of minus j 2 pi f capital t b therefore the overall transfer function of the duo binary filter including the ideal channel which itself has a transfer function of hc of f is given by hc of f into 1 plus exponential of minus j2 pi f tb now you can see this is in the form of 1 plus e to the power of minus 2 theta so if i take e to the power of minus theta common what comes here in place of 1 is e to the power of plus theta so that is what is done in the next line here. So I'm taking exponential of minus j pi ftb common. So what comes here is e to the power of plus j pi ftb plus what remains here is only e to the power of minus j pi ftb. Now looking back into this expression, we note that this is in the form e to the power of plus theta plus e to the power of minus theta. This is given by 2 into cos theta. So this expression is now reduced to 2 multiplied by cos pi f t b. Now let me take this 2 towards the constant term. So the final expression for the overall transfer function of the duo binary conversion filter is 2 h c of f cos pi f t b multiplied by exponential of minus j pi f t b. Now let us find an expression for the ideal channel transfer function h c of f. Now, the transfer function of an ideal channel of let us say bandwidth b0 which is equals to rb by 2 where rb is the bit rate is given by h c of f is equals to 1 for all frequencies less than or equal to b0 or rb by 2 and otherwise 0. So, you can now imagine a rectangular transfer function which has a flat amplitude with value 1 and abruptly ends at minus b0 and plus b0. Let us now substitute equation 3 which is for hc of f back into our overall transfer function of the duo binary filter by applying the limits as well. So the final expression for the overall frequency response or the transfer function of the duo binary conversion filter is 2 multiplied by now since hc of f is 1 for all the frequencies less than or equal to rb by 2 i will replace hc of f as 1 here and i apply the limit here as well so h of f is equals to 2 cos pi f tb into exponential of minus j pi f tb for frequencies less than or equals to rb by 2 and otherwise it is 0 now looking into this expression we find that the frequency response of the duo binary filter is in the form of a half cycle cosine function. In these two diagrams, we have shown the amplitude response and phase response of the duo binary conversion filter. Now, from this expression, we see that the maximum amplitude is 2, and that is why when f is equal to 0, we start from 2. And since the representation is of a half cycle cosine function, we start from 2 and end at b0, which is also equals to rb by 2. So, this starting from 0 till rb by 2 forms the half cycle cosine function and that is why we said the transfer function is in the form of a half cycle cosine function. In this diagram, you are seeing the phase response of the duo binary conversion filter. Right, so with that we have now found the transfer function. Let us now move on and find the impulse response of the duo binary conversion filter. Now, since we are introducing correlation between adjacent samples and each sample is practically represented by a sync function, the corresponding value of the impulse response now consists of two pulses that are time displaced by 1 TB seconds. Now, let us come back and see why. Because when you look at the diagram, we have a 1 bit delay element. So, therefore, the impulse response at the output of the Diobanetic conversion filter will have two sync pulses which are time displaced by 1 tb seconds. Now let us write an expression for that. So ht of f is equals to, we will first write the sync function with no delay element. So that is sine pi t divided by tb divided by pi t divided by tb plus the second sync function 
with a delay element of 1 tb is given by sin of pi t minus tb divided by tb whole divided by pi into t minus tb whole divided by tb. Now, since sin is negative in the second quadrant, sin of pi t minus tb can be written as minus of sin pi t divided by tb. So, the expression here has now reduced to this form. The final expression for the impulse response of the dual binary conversion filter as h of t equals tb square sin pi t divided by tb whole divided by pi t into tb minus t. This impulse response is shown plotted in the diagram here. Now, from the diagram, we note that the overall impulse response h of t has two distinguishable values at the corresponding sampling instance. So, the value of h of t at time t is equals to 0 and 1 tb is 1 and for every other sampling instant, the value of h of t is 0. It's very important that you note the impulse response is equal to 1 for values of t equals to 0 and 1 tb. This is because in the dual binary conversion filter, we have introduced correlation between the adjacent samples which are spaced apart by 1 tb. That is why the h of t value is 1 for both 0 and plus tb. Right. So, that is about the transmitter part of the dual binary conversion filter. Let us now move on to the detection part. Particularly, let us now discuss on the detection as well as reconstruction of the original binary sequence. Now, the original binary data sequence BK can be detected from the dual binary encoded sequence CK by simply subtracting the previously decoded binary digit from the currently received digit CK. Let BK cap represent the estimate of the original binary digit BK. Then we can compute BK cap by using the equation BK cap equals CK minus BK minus 1 cap. From equation 6, we can state that if CK is received without an error, and if the previous estimate bk minus 1 cap also represents a correct decision, then the current estimate bk cap will also be correct. Therefore, what we identify from equation 6 is that the detection procedure used is simply an inverse of the operation of the simple filter at the transmitter. Let us go back and verify that. If you come back to the equation 1 here, you see, to construct ck, we simply added the current binary digit and the previous binary digit. Now, at the receiver, to obtain the estimate of the current binary digit, we subtract the previous estimate from the current received digit CK. That is why we say the detection procedure is simply an inverse of the operation of the transmitter. One of the biggest disadvantages of this detection process is that once errors are made, they tend to propagate. This is because the decision of the current binary digit, which is BK cap, depends on the correctness of the previous decision B of K minus 1 cap as well. If the previous decision itself is an error, then the chances of the current decision also becoming an error are very, very high. Therefore, we can conclude that the dual binary conversion filter suffers from chaining of errors. A practical means of avoiding this error propagation is to use a precoder before the dual binary coder as shown in the diagram here. Please note, this represents the dual binary coder which we had shown in the figure 1 previously. So, this complete part is represented as a small block in this diagram. And here, we have introduced an additional block which is called as a precoder. Also, you should note that the precoder must be connected before the dual binary coder. Looking into the precoder, we identify that it also has a 1 bit delay element as well as a modulo 2 adder. You can also understand this as an XOR operation. Now, the binary sequence BK is first applied to the precoder that converts it into another binary sequence AK. This is because we have a modulo 2 adder which means the output can only take two values, either 0 or 1. Now, the equation for the binary sequence AK at the precoder output can now be given as BK plus we have AK minus 1 that is given here. 
but it has to be a modulo 2 addition. The resulting precoder output AK is next applied to the dual binary conversion filter which produces the output binary sequence CK. Now we already have learned how the dual binary conversion filter works. So if I have to write an expression for the output sequence CK, then I will write it in the form as CK equals AK plus A of K minus 1. This is directly derived from the equation 1 here. You see without the precoder CK is BK plus B of K minus 1 and with the precoder the output of the dual binary coder is AK plus AK minus 1. Now from this particular technique we note that the sequence BK is converted into the output binary sequence CK at two different steps. So unlike the linear operation of the dual binary coder, the introduction of the precoder makes the conversion of BK into CK a non-linear operation. Let us once again assume that the binary precoder output AK has symbol 1 represented by plus 1 volt and symbol 0 by minus 1 volt. Therefore, from equation 7 and equation 8, which is AK and CK respectively, we find that the dual binary sequence CK is constructed as per equation 9. That is, if BK is represented by symbol 0, then the coder output is plus or minus 2 volts. On the other hand, if BK is represented by a symbol 1, then the coder output is 0 volts. So that is about the transmitter part. Let us now move on to the receiver part for the pre-coded dual binary sequence. From equation 9, we can directly write a decision rule for reconstructing BK from the received sequence CK. So when I come back to the receiver and try to write a decision rule, all I need to now do is check whether the magnitude of the received digit is greater than 1 volt. If it is greater than 1 volt, then you make a decision in favor of symbol 0. This in fact represents a correct decision because when I take magnitude on CK here, plus 2 as well as minus 2 converts simply to plus 2. So whenever you have plus or minus 2 volts for CK, a decision has to be made in favor of symbol 0. On the other hand, if the magnitude value of CK is less than 1 volt, then a decision has to be made in favor of symbol 1. So that is about the decision rule for pre-coded dual binary signaling scheme. Now looking into equation 10, you note that the detector would now require a rectifier because now you are converting plus or minus 2 values into plus values only. So as per the equation 10, the detector for pre-coded dual binary signaling scheme consists of a rectifier to convert the negative values to positive values as well as a comparator because now you are comparing the output of the rectifier with a threshold. This is given in the diagram 6 here. As per the diagram here, the received sequence is first rectified to get the magnitude value of the corresponding digit which is then compared to a threshold and as per our equation 10, the threshold is 1 volt and as per the results of the comparison, a corresponding decision is made. So that is about the detector part of the pre-coded dual binary signaling scheme. Lastly, before I end, I would like to now show you that this scheme, that is the pre-coded dual binary signaling scheme, does not cascade or does not chain errors as the simple dual binary signaling scheme did. This is very easily understandable by equation 10 here. Now, from equation 10, you should note the pre-coded dual binary coder does not use the previous estimate to reconstruct the current estimate. So the BK cap estimation does not involve the previous estimate for making the decision. Therefore, we can now conclude that the error propagation is completely eliminated from the dual binary signaling scheme by adding a precoder as in the diagram here. Right, that is about the discussion on the dual binary signaling scheme. In my next video, I'll take a simple binary sequence and illustrate the dual binary as well as pre-coded dual binary signaling scheme operations using a mathematical approach. If you like this video, kindly press that like button and subscribe to my channel for more videos on digital communication. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.